Greetings once again, Python coders. It is I, Alan D. Moore, author of this book, Python GUI Programming with TK Enter from Pact Publications, available wherever fine books on GUI programming are sold. Today, this is video nine of our TK Enter Basics series, and it's part three of three of our TTK mini series on the themed widget set that comes with TK Enter. Today, we're actually going to be talking about those themes and about styling these widgets. Um, we're not going to go super, super deep into that, but you should get plenty to get started with. Okay, so we have our diary application right over here. And I realize, you know, we're about to talk about how to style TTK widgets. We haven't really talked about how to style regular TK widgets. Um, we did talk a little bit about changing the font. So as you'll remember, we can change the font size on our text widget, which is just a regular TK widget. It's not a TTK widget. Um, but we can do a couple other things too. So let me close this out. On regular TK enter widgets, we can actually set a foreground and background color property. Um, and you can spell that out, or if you're in a hurry, you can just say FG for foreground, and that's going to be the text. Uh, we'll make that navy, and then BG for background. Um, we'll make that khaki. Nice workplace combination there, navy and, and khaki. Go ahead and save that. We'll run it, and we've got a nice khaki background there. Let me kick the font size up again. We'll say, hello, workplace. All right, we've got some nice navy text there on a khaki background. So you can do that on entries, on labels, on basically any default TK widget. But the TTK widgets, are a little different. It's a little more complicated, but it's also a lot more powerful. So we're going to see how we dig into that. All right, first thing we need to create to start messing around with the TTK styles and themes is we need a style object. And you only have to create this once in your application. Um, you just need to have a reference to it everywhere that you'd want to use it. Um, and you can recreate it again. What it, what it represents is just a point of interaction with the currently loaded theme. So let's make one. It is style equals TTK, and that's a style. I'm not giving it any arguments there. Uh, it just is what it is. All right. So again, that represents our point of control and interaction with the styling system. So any change you make to this object is going to affect the current theme that's running. So on every operating system, TK enter ships with four or five different themes that you can choose from. Um, and we can list those themes using the style objects theme names method. So let's say print style.theme names. Now when we run this, move this out of the way, we're going to bring this over and you can see that it's printed out a tuple of four strings and these four strings are the themes that I have on my system. Now my system is Linux. If you're on Windows or Mac this is going to be a different list. Obviously default is the one that I'm running by default. Each of these themes has a completely different look and feel and different widgets. So what we're going to do first of all is to make a theme switcher in our application so we can quickly switch between those themes and just see what they look like. All right, to do that, we're going to need a variable. So let's say theme var equals tk.string var, of course, because theme names are just strings. And then we need to create a callback function to switch the theme. So down here, scroll down to our functions. We're going to create set theme that will eat up any args it gets. 
and it's going to simply just get the name of that theme. So theme var dot get. And of course, I typed that wrong. There we go. And then style. The method we want to use here is theme use. And we give it that theme name. All right, very simple. Now, let's bind that. Uh, so we'll say theme var dot trace add. So whenever the theme var is changed, we'll call set theme. To actually change the value of that theme var, we're going to create a menu in our menu system. So let's go down to the menu area. Okay, so down here at the end of our menu, we'll create a new menu. We'll call it theme menu. And that's a TK menu. And it'll be part of the options menu. Yes, tear off equals zero. We don't want tear off menus. And then options menu dot add cascade menu equals theme menu. And we'll label that theme. Now, to create this menu, what do we need to do? We need to get a list of our theme names. How do we do that? For theme in style dot theme names. Right, we can use that same method just to get a list for our menu. We're going to say theme menu, and we'll do radio buttons. So add radio button. Label will be the theme name. The value will be the theme name. And the variable will be the theme bar. Let me just clean that up a little bit. Good. Okay, that should be all we need. Let's give that a shot. We're going to run it. Up here in our options menu, we now have a theme menu. It's currently default, but let me change that to clam. And you can say that changed the theme quite a bit. So the button looks quite a bit different. Radio buttons are now circular instead of diamond. Our checkbox now has an X in it. Instead of being filled in, these have circles in them. All right, let's try a different theme. Let's try the alt theme. So a little bit different relief on all the entry widgets. It's a little deeper looking. Buttons are definitely more, more of a relief. They, they seem to pop out of the page a little more. Um, and then the classic theme. Oh boy, this looks like some 90s Unix. That is definitely very classic. <laughs> very, very classic. So those are the different themes available to me on Linux. Again, on Mac OS or Windows, you will have a different set of themes and you can have fun trying those out and seeing how they look on your system. Okay, so themes let you change kind of the overall look and feel of your application. But what about getting a little more granular? What if we want to change individual elements on our application, say colors, fonts, things like that? That's where we need to get into styles. So I'm going to roll back up to the top here under where I've created my style object. And we're going to start changing the style for certain elements. Now, the way this works in TTK is every different kind of widget has a class name. It's just a string. And we can call the style.configure method. And this is a little different from configure on widgets. It, we don't just start handing it keyword arguments. We first have to hand it a positional argument with the theme name. Most of these are going to be just the name of the widget plus T, a capital T. So like for a label, it's going to be capital T label, capital T, capital L. And I can change font. I can change foreground, background, a variety of other things. So let's, 
let's just change the font. Let's make these bigger because they've probably been a little hard to read. We'll say Arial 18 bold. Since I'm, since I'm changing the T label class, that means every label object in this GUI is going to have its font changed. So let's run that. See how that's changed things. So right here you can see my two labels right here have much bigger, bolder font. Now I have labels for this check button and these radio buttons and this label frame, but they're not class T label because they're not directly just labels. Okay, they have their own class. So if we want to change all of that, we have to find what those individual classes are. And that's something you look up in the documentation. So let's go through and let's configure our check button. So that's going to be T check button is the class we want to change. We'll give it a font that's a little larger. Let's see, we'll just go 16 for that. And we can also give it a background color. Let's give it a background. Let's make it silver. I'll run that. And now you can see right here that our check button label is much bigger. It's also got a slightly different shade of gray that's apparently silver on its background. Now when I hover over it, that changes. We'll get into that in just a second. Oh, and you can see down here our status bar also is a label, so it's got a larger font from that first T label call. All right, let's do let's do our radio buttons. So T radio button is our class. We'll set the font to Arial 16, and we'll set its background. Let's see, how about light blue? That seems very modern, at least for... All right, so there you go. Now the background of all my radio buttons is light blue, and the text is much larger. All right, let's try our label frame, right? We want that label frame to be larger, so it's going to be T label frame, and the F is lowercase, by the way. And we'll say font is Arial, let's go 18 bold. And a background of light blue. Let's try that out. Hmm, now we got our background of light blue, but notice our text is the same size. And actually, if you look very closely, the background of the text is still gray. So we effectively made the background of the label frame blue, but we didn't make the label itself blue, or we didn't make the font big. How do we do that? Well, within each class, we can access sub-items of the class. Again, you have to look up in the documentation to find these names. In this case, it's going to be label. So we say tlabelframe.label. And now instead of changing the style of the label frame, we're changing the style of the label frame's label. Go ahead and run that. And now you can see just the label is blue and the text is much larger. So this can get very tricky very quickly, as you can see, as you try to change compound objects like that and get every little item the way you want it. Okay, so what happens if I want one particular label to look different than all the others? Say, I want the status bar to have its own look, right? Now, I can't just change T label because that would change my other labels in a way that I don't want that to be. So what we can do here is create a custom style. All right, and the way we do that is, again, we call style.configure. And we'll call this status.tlabel. Now your custom style has to include the name of the current style for that widget. Okay, you can't just go calling this anything. So you're going to have a custom name, dot, and then whatever the name is for the actual widget style. 
so in this case T label. I could call it foofazmagoo.tlabel, it wouldn't matter, it just has to have that T label at the end. All right, so we'll change that to um, a smaller font. Let's say Arial 12, and we'll make the background white. Okay, so how does TK Enter know to apply that style to that widget? Well, down here, when we create that widget, so down here at the status bar, when we create that label, we can pass in a style argument, and that's going to be status.tlabel. So now let's run that, and you can see our status bar down here is white. Let me see if I can get some text in it. All right, there you go. So now we've got some text in it. You can see that text is now small. It's 12 point and it's on a white background. And that's kind of the basics of doing styles in TTK. Remember, this only affects TTK widgets. So we couldn't do this for, say, our text widget. We just have to do the old fashioned foreground background styles there. OK, the last thing I want to show you today on styles what about dynamic styling? So for example, I want to change the way a check button looks when I select it, or the way a radio button looks when it's selected. To do that, I need to override the styles map for that class. And a map depends on widget states. So every widget in TKinter has a set of states that it can be in. Uh, so, for example, a check button can be active, meaning I'm hovering over it. It can be selected, meaning that I've checked its box. It can be disabled. Um, if I want to disable input, it can be read-only. Okay. So depending on what state that widget's in, I can decide to have a different setting for the style. And the way I do that is with a map. So let's do a map for our radio buttons, and here's how it looks. I say style.map, okay, and I'm going to give it the class name, so this is going to be T radio button, and then I'm going to start defining some keyword arguments. So let's start with a font. So I want to change the font when it's selected as compared to when it's not. So I give font a list, and inside this list, we're going to have tuples, and each tuple is going to be a state. So let's say selected, and then a value for that state. So I'll say Arial 16 bold, right? So our radio buttons, by default, the font is Arial 16. When it has a selected state, that's going to change to Arial 16 bold. Let's run that and see it in action. So here's my radio buttons. I'm going to select one, and you notice it turns bold. Okay. It also kind of cuts off the text, so we'd want to add more padding there. But you can see as soon as it changes away from being selected, it goes back to normal. When I select it, it's bold. Okay. We can do the same thing for our check box or check button style.map t check button and this time we'll do the background color background and a list now check button can be in several states like I mentioned um, it can be selected and when it's selected we'll say that it's pink it can be active so when I hover over the check button that's a different state. So I'm going to add another tuple and I'll say active. We'll have that be red. Uh, it could also be disabled, which we don't have a way to do that right now in our application, but just for completeness, we'll say that's going to be gray. Okay, let's, tr let's see that in action. 
There it is. It's silver when nothing's happening. When I hover it, it becomes red. And then click on it. And now it becomes pink when it's checked. Uncheck it. It's red because I'm hovering it. But when I'm not hovering it, it's gray or silver. So that's how you create a dynamic style. So I know that's not a lot today, but that is enough to get you started on really changing the look and the appearance of your application. Uh, these TTK widgets are very powerful in that way. And you can go a lot deeper on these things. So within these widgets, you have different what's called elements, which are the little components within the widget. Say like on a combo box, you have the drop down arrow. That's an element. Okay, the the entry background is an element. The the drop down itself is an element, and you can style these elements individually. You can swap out images. Um, there are also third party themes that you can download and use. So you can really dig in and do a lot with styling. I know we talk about how TK Enter gets a you know pretty rough treatment over the way it looks. You can really go pretty far with a little tender love and care, and you can make your TK Enter applications look pretty cool. So I hope that helps you do that. If you have any questions, please leave comments down below, and uh, please subscribe. Hope to see you next time. Keep learning, and God bless.